everybody. Uh, so today we're changing things up a little bit. And as you can see, I am not wearing my apron. So we're going to be getting not messy today. We're going to be doing flat caps. And oddly enough, it's my least favorite because I do like getting messy, but also it's not complicated to sew. It's just sort of time consuming. So <laughs> you'll see. I'll be going through it. And it's definitely something you can do 100% at home as long as you've got your sewing machine and lots of fabric. So let's get started. Okay, so stuff that you'll need for this. Um, okay, so I am actually starting with a Vogue pattern. Not the pattern I usually use, but it's something you can get at the fabric stores and things like that. There's a bunch uh, of other patterns that come in the uh, envelope, I guess. Actually, let me see. I have it. Oh, I do have it. Okay. This is the actual one. So I am doing a two-tone, which is on the bottom there. So that's what we're doing. That is the, the pattern number that you'd need. Um, they have this rim in there. I don't, I don't like this at all. So I actually modified it. So if she says inside brim, it's like cut it a little bit different. Um, so we've got the two parts to it, technically three, um, not technically, it's three. This is your outside. You can actually make this, uh, two of the same color pattern, whatever you want, but today I'm doing two-tone and it actually helps me show you the different pieces. So you need, uh, the piece that you're going to have for the main body of your crown, the side piece and your brim. So I'm doing, this is going to be my um, main body um, and the brim. And then this I'm actually going to use for my side piece. As you can see, they need to be ironed. Um, you're going to actually need fabric for the inside for the lining. And something to actually make your uh, inside sweatband. So I actually choose a lightweight cotton fabric. And then I have a liner that goes internally. And I'll show you how to do that. You can see how the cap thing is. It's the lightweight. It's just to actually help uh, the fabric kind of like stay adhered. You can buy stuff that's actually um, adhesive. Um, you can buy stuff that's adhesive, which is heat or just has backing on it. That's up to you if you want to actually make it super easy. You just peel off the backing and just like lay it on there. Um, I just use this and sew it in. It's pretty, pretty easy to go. I don't know what that is. So uh, you need lots and lots of pins. And of course, uh, whatever color thread you decide to work with. Oh, um, yeah. So this guy, I got off of Etsy. You can see that it actually has some flexibility to it. Um, if I add some steam and heat to it, it'll actually keep that nice curvature to it. I'm gonna cut this down. Um, I think this is actually a baseball uh, brim. But you can use uh, like a thicker cardboard. Just make sure your hat's not going to be getting wet if you use a cardboard because this is like this is a press board, so um, you can probably spray it down with some shellac to actually make it a little bit more water, water and weather resistant if you'd like. So we've got that, and uh, I think that's all we need for our materials. Okay, so I've got our fabric laid out. I have ironed everything. Um, and I actually did a rough chalk outline of where I'm going to be cutting. So we need two of our brim uh, and then one of our base crown. So this is the fabric that I'm using for the base. Like I said, I'm using a different um, pattern on the sides. So when you cut these, make sure that everybody's facing the same direction. So your center front is going this way. Which means when you cut, you can't cut unless it's like, you know, flat pattern. Um, you can't cut this way because you're going to have everything going kind of caliwunkled. So you want to keep everybody going in the same direction of the pattern. Um, this one yeah, has a grain line. So if you um, have something with a little bit more complicated pattern, like maybe a, a hound's tooth, you want to follow your grain line. So I actually already cut this as well. 
um, to go inside of my brim. I used a pair of uh, trauma shears, and when I'm finished, I'm going to be shaping it. Um, so I guess you do this as well. This is what I'm actually going to be cutting my side panel for. So this is my side panel. As you can see, um, as I've mentioned before, I um, don't often keep the main patterns completely um, like this. I made my own pattern for, I made my own pattern for uh, the outside of my brim uh, that I cut here. Um, I don't like that for this one at all that they have in there, but you, you're welcome to use it. You can trim it down, do whatever you need to do. Um, I also don't like their sweatband pattern, but it does come with one. Um, so I cut my own. And I'm not showing you guys uh, me cutting anything because I've cut like a drunk monkey and it's crazy. Nobody wants to see that. Also, nobody wants to see me iron because it's like, you know, slow. But I will show you how I iron this together. Um, this I cut is about two and a half here. Um, I didn't measure this, sorry about that. So it's about like, you know, half that. So I just basically wanted to cut this. You have the strip in the middle. What we're gonna end up doing is just folding this over on both sides. So I'll show you how we are in that and so that for our internal sweatband. Uh, so I'm going to cut these guys and then I will show you the best way to pin this before you start running it through the sewing machine. Um, I'm probably just going to do the bits and pieces because the construction of your inside is going to be this and this as well. So it's the same sewing, same construction, and everything like that. Um, so I'll show you this part sewn together, and then I'll sew this separate, and then we'll just put it in internally. Um, you'll, you'll get the point when I show it to you. But okay, so follow the directions on your Vogue pattern, um, and then we'll get started. As the, the directions on how you sew it, eh, they're not exactly clear, so showing you on video is a lot easier, especially since the way it comes together and the way you want to pin it. And um, if you've ever sewn professionally, like it's kind of like your sleeves, uh, poofy sleeves and everything like that. So the one shape that fits into the other is a little bit more oblong, I guess I could say. I'll show you. So let's cut all this stuff out and get going. Okay, so got everything cut out. And this is what I ended up with is uh, three layers. I've got my top layer my inner lining and basically like the lining that's going to go in so it's the your head is three layers so you'd be going more like this uh i am actually doing an inner lining or inner facing um because this is such a light material that this would be such a flimsy hat if i didn't um so what i'm going to end up doing is showing you guys how to sew this um together with um, the other piece. All the other same other pieces are sewn together the exact same way and then I'll show you the assembly for it. Um, I also actually cut an extra piece to go in here. But if you have a heavy enough fabric for your outer, you don't necessarily need this. You can get away with without doing it. It just gives you a little bit more uh, stiffness, crispness, and more structure internally. So I will leave that up to you guys. Have fun, experiment, and see what certain fabrics do and and whatnot. So uh, let's get to the, the pinning and the sewing part of this. We're gonna uh, be sewing this first, our brim. Okay, so we're pinned out on just the outside here. Um, I'm gonna do, obviously, wrong side facing in. So we're gonna start from our corner here. Um, I have a jeans weight needle in here. It's a little bit too hefty probably for this fabric, but it'll do just fine when what we're doing later on because we're actually going to be getting a little bit sicker. So.
I got that in the last one. No, I'll fold it over. So, trim the edges there. Mm -hmm. Just add little cuts to just keep that shape there. And then we'll give you a nice crispy edge. That's the shape that you want to end up with. Um, and then we are going to sew our lining and tuck it inside. And then tuck our, our bin inside and then sew that. So give me a second, I'll do that and then we'll sew the rim. So we've ironed this out nicely. I've got this sewn and then we tucked our, our rim in there. We're good to go. So what I'm gonna do now is just pushing down. Make sure that's nice in there. Pin this out. There. Try to pin really close. Ow. <laughs> We can get this without running it over. Rim. And next, we are going to go to the body of the crown and start sewing that. So, I'll show you guys how to pin that together. So, I've sewn the back already to this. It's pretty self explanatory. Um, I wanted to show you the next part mainly because this is just, it's a little bit complicated if you've never done it. Um, the instructions on most of them aren't very clear or they just don't give you a heads up to like let you know that just the geometry of all of this is a little complicated so you want you know your round part like the round part here so uh, if you just look at it like there's more of a you know, curvature on your outside so your outside curve is larger inside curve is shorter your outside curve is what you want to actually match up I would say definitely when you are marking out your fabric and everything like that to try and get um, your center lines marked. It will make your life a lot easier. I think you can see that I'm following the curvature here. Just kind of tuck it. Get 
in our corner. Got one in the corner. Don't want that one. This one. There we go. Okay. So we're going to follow this around the corner. Move it. It's a little frustrating to sew and pin together. This is why these are my least favorite hats. I find them woefully uncooperative. So do the other side. You'll notice I'm doing the sides first and I will show you why in a moment. Sounded like something just fell. Oh, that's the other side. Making my life complicated here. So, make sure you have your midlines marked and everything like that. You can just kind of line them up where you need to. But as I sew, I usually just take the pin out anyway, because you'll find that like the way that these line up, you kind of have to keep scooching it. I'll show you what I mean. I think I just hit my camera, man. <laughs> he was in close for the shot. All right, so. Keep trying to follow the curvature that the fabric has. Just keep kind of scooching everything where you need it to go. Make sure it doesn't bunch up underneath there. So we're following the full curvature. It's just erg. No, I'm gonna miss a spot. to this point and you just keep moving your fabric Let me make sure we want that back there okay you keep moving your fabric to line up with itself and if you pinned all of this it would bunch on you and you'd find that you have a bunch of extra fabric at the end so you don't want to pin the whole thing around you want to just keep going slowly and just pull and match Pull and match. Sometimes, even as long as I have been doing this, sometimes this works out really well for me. Sometimes I end up with, you know, I bunch my fabric wrong, I pull it too tight. Um, if you have issues with it on the first, you know, couple of times, don't be discouraged because, I mean, there's always going to be issues like, look, right now, um, I did not cut this completely right. <laughs> I'm also scooching too hard. 
So if like, your fabric's a little stretchy, you're gonna end up with a whole bunch extra. So this is great, I get to show you guys how I mess up on stuff, yay! Um, so as long as I've been doing this, and it's for many years, I still have issues with these hats. These are my least favorite hats. They're very frustrating for me. I like being a pain in my tickets. So I'm just going to take this and just fold it. I'm sure it would be great if I go in and be like, hey, but look, it's perfect and it's a circle and everything worked out okay. I could do that, but I'd also be lying. <laughs> so I much rather be honest with you guys and show you why I dislike these hats so much. So it's going to take a little while to get used to them and exactly like where you need to like that's why I modify it so I don't like this pattern I trim them to make sure that I actually have my overlap really really well I've actually ended up with a couple of patterns where the instructions and how the pattern was cut ends up being not so great one Vogue pattern. It's a really gorgeous, like, almost like a fedora, um, the way that the hat was made, and on all of the websites I'm on, on Facebook for millinery, like, women have tried even, like, the 18th and 19th century millinery and, um, you know, historical, uh, costumes and everything, like, everybody was having so much trouble trying to figure it out, and, like, nobody could figure out the actual instructions for this, so, well, not this, but the, uh, the Vogue pattern. I'll have to show you guys later on and warn you away from that actual hat because it was so complicated. And I still have yet to find anybody that figured it out and everybody modified the design and modified the directions <laughs> with it. So, I mean, oh, uh, this is why I modify everything. Look at this way. So, I'm going to move up nicely. And the reason why I actually trim my brim is because I actually like it to hide underneath a lot more than they have in the original pattern. Because they actually had their sticking out a lot further. I like it to be a little bit more traditional and hide it underneath a little bit more. I wanted to introduce you guys to these, mainly because they're hats that you can pretty much do with very minimal equipment. They just take some practice and finesse, that is all. What I would like to deal with buckram or even sinme um, over dealing with these guys. I am not as good as somebody who would be a tailor that can just look at their curves and linear lines and be like, that's not going to match up. Okay, let's just see if this matches up. <laughs> Doesn't match up, we'll fix it. We'll modify the pattern. sure you can tell I really like rabbits. If that comes to a surprise. <laughs> okay, so when you're doing uh, your edges here to where it's going to connect to the brim, just think about how much stress is actually going to be on that when you're going to wear it or whoever's going to wear it. Um, there's going to be, they're going to be pulling it down on their head all the time. So you're going to want some extra strength there. So go over that a couple times. Go 
don't go two nuts, just mainly because you'll have a knot there, but you want a little extra strength. You would not believe, if you ask anybody who's done sewing, how many times they've accidentally sewed things inside out, backwards, over things. Like, it's ridiculous. Making a jacket the other day, and I, I completely <laughs> sewed things. I was sewing over it so many times, it was a slippery fabric, and I was just like, yeah. There were lots of uh, bad words that went into that that day. I've sewn my sweatbands backwards several times and then like I've checked, check, double check and I don't know what it is. There's lots of professional seamstresses that we've all commiserate over the fact that you make mistakes <laughs> all the time. Especially if you're tired and frustrated. I, uh, I try to stop when I'm tired and frustrated because you make a lot of mistakes even though you feel like you're checking for them all the time so like don't do the hat making when you're frustrated that's my advice and also don't get too frustrated with yourself if you make mistakes everybody's gonna make them nobody's perfect what i'm up to here is i am trying to line up all of my seams and pin them in um i've already sewn uh my lining and my interfacing so we're going to go around, line up all of our seams, and I'm going to actually meet my seams together all around here. So all around we're going to go up here, so this is where my finish line is, so where I'm going to meet it. I'm going to do all of my pinning and then we'll come back to that. And show you in just a second. So we are doing the inside sweatband and all I'm doing is just folding this over and ironing it. I'm doing them both the same side because I like to be lazy. Hoping my iron's hot enough too, because it's one of those wonderful ones that turns off if you walk away from it for five seconds. Come on, there you go. After we're done this, we're going to run it through the sewing machine, um, give it some nice stitching so it doesn't come off. So unfortunately, like a lot of hats I see for sale at like the big box stores and things like that, they um, do pretty much the same method, but they so only like here and here and then if you flip them over you've got all this excess so i actually tend to do a lot of um sewing on these then you know sew the extra lines on there that way this is nice and secure if you flip it over it's not going to be showing you know your internals So when I flip it over, I actually try to just give it a little bit of a tug so that I'm ironing it. Just a little bit of a curve on it if I can. Cotton is beautiful for that. And we're going to run this to the sewing machine. 
this is a bit finicky part here. We already have our sweatband sewn. Uh, we're almost ready for that, except for the last part that I want to do is attach our top crown to our brim. So move everybody out of the way as much as I can. And we just went a little bit up there. So we don't want to go nuts. We just want top up here. So we can do this internally or externally as far as like this goes, but I want to see where I'm going on my brim. Don't. It's gonna make a mess. There we go. Not too bad. Alright, so I'm going to take my sweatband and pin it. Um, so when I get this all in place, this is the back. I'm going to just pin it here for just a second so it doesn't wiggle all over the place. It'll stay there. So after we get this sewn on the outside, just because this will give you a little bit of an issue after you get that sewn there, you're going to want to actually curl this under and sew that in place there. This is if you left it hanging, it sort of just would be like all over the place. And as soon as you, they go to put the hat on, this will just flip down. So you just kind of roll it under and sew that together there. So I'm going to do that and then I think after that we should be pretty good to, to go on our hat. So I wanted to show you really quick just how this is curled under. I think you can see it's tucked under and sewn. That'll just keep things from rolling outward on your brim or your sweatband here because um, the brim like you can flex it and everything like that, and they put it on. This will just roll out, and this will keep it from rolling out. So we got a nice stitch here, a nice stitch here, so we're good to go. So here's the hat. It's a little bit big on me, and I think I would actually like to make this a little bit uh, narrower from my face, but it works for somebody with a little bit larger head. <laughs> so play with everything as needed. So I hope that was fun for you guys. Uh, I do actually make quite a bit of them and I like doing the mixing combination. So uh, switch things up however you want to and try different fabrics. Um, hopefully the Vogue pattern that I showed you guys actually works out for you. There's a couple of patterns you can actually find online. So uh, just keep trying stuff, whatever works for you and uh, make a bazillion of them if you want to and uh, show me pictures. I want pictures in the comments and let me know what you guys think and I'll be seeing you again soon.